Well, hi and welcome. Uh, I've got a new little project. This isn't going to take long. Um, this is a 1961. I think they made them from about 61 to 71 or something like that. It's a Westinghouse, but it's a rebadged AWA Australian amalgamated wireless unit. It's a valve set. Uh, I got it at a um, antique shop and it cost me $45, which isn't bad from an antique shop. They usually charge the earth. So uh, pretty happy with it. Uh, it has a knob missing which I was worried about but I went to the local radio club swap meet the other day last Sunday and they had a knob there so <laughs> first it didn't cost me anything virtually so I was worried about that but I've, um, uh, I've got the set now so that's good. It's all plastic uh, it's called wide fi I don't know what that means it's, it's only got one speaker by the look of it so uh, should be really easy. I'll just just clean this up. I'm not gonna, I'm not going to go overboard with this one. It's pretty good anyway. Polish the polish the perspex there. Uh, the word Westinghouse is worn off. It's actually raised, so I don't know how I'm going to reproduce that. I might just have to accept that it's not going to uh, to look uh, as new, but I'll keep it in original condition, so it should be okay. So I'm going to take the back off, and uh, we'll see what's inside. Yeah, okay, there's the uh, uh, there's the decal. It's got the valves. Yeah. So it's got the dial string winding instructions there. That's handy. All right, I'll keep that somewhere. I'll try and glue it back inside. Underneath doesn't look too bad. I, I yeah, it's a bit of dust. A um, couple of caps in there. Fairly modern caps uh, compared to what I'm used to seeing. So. Uh, you never know. It says it says on the label it's not working. I don't know what that means. I don't know if it means they didn't try it or it's not working. Not sure. All right. I kind of like these um, later valve radios because they miniaturised everything. The valves are small. The IF cans are small. Uh, they've done things like put a cover over the uh, 240 volts or the mains voltage anyway. The dial's looking good. It's, um, it's only a bit. Of, it's only a sticker, so worst case, I could even make a new one pretty easily. But uh, that looks pretty good. It's got a couple of bubbles in it. But, uh, that's not going to matter. Now, it has been pointed out to me that I, I should check the um, make sure these uh, the primary isn't shorted to earth uh, before I plug them in. Um, so I'm going to do that. Uh, I, I always take them up on a uh, dim bulb anyway, and uh, use the um, the variac so I don't really think there's an issue and I don't touch it until I know everything's working anyway so it's not sure to do it now the other thing they said was to make sure you check the HT's not going to uh, to earth as well it's not shorted yeah let's try this with some power on so I've got a dim bulb we're probably running at about 100 volts 120 something like that oh not even that yeah that's a dead short there okay dead short Okay, let's take out the rectifier tube. This is another transformer that's broken. I'm giving up. No. Nope. So that's just running the filaments at the moment. So the transformer might be alright. Um, yes, simple. something wrong there. Something is very wrong. This is the uh, primary wires coming in. So I'll just check that for continuity. It would be fairly low. 20, 20 ohms it's got there and it is not it's not going to short into it that to ground. These are the secondaries coming out and that's the center tap and I've just lifted the center tap wire off. I've taken the rectifier out, so all I'm measuring is this, these two purple wires here are effectively not connected to anything. And I've got 250, 254, so half of that should be around 125 odd, 128.
I'm 26, that's not too bad, is it? Okay, I've got my meter on AC. Uh, I've connected to the uh, center tap and one of the uh, secondary outs. And I'll just put some power on. But, uh, it's uh, producing 200 volts, but the wattage is up to 50 watts with nothing connected. So there's definitely an issue with the transformer. I'll have to go and dig out another one. As luck would have it, I got this on Sunday at one of the Radio Club um, boot sales. Uh, so I got the whole radio, which has got the full complement of valves and uh, this transformer. And uh, like I say, I got it Sunday, so you can't do better than that. Here's the the new one. There's the one out of the radio. Uh, two five eight zero seven. That says, and that says two five eight zero seven. So they're exactly the same. Across the secondary of the original transformer, we've got 260. And on the new transformer, we've got, or it can be higher, yeah, 359. So if I go, if I go to the center tap there, we should have, what, about 180. A bit of luck, 183. Across the other secondary, 176. All right. I'll just put some uh, mains onto this just to see what sort of wattage it's pulling. So I've put the mains onto the, uh, the inputs for the primary there. So I've got the watt meter going there. I've got it on restricted power. Uh, I'm just all I'm doing is applying power to the primary side of the transformer. And light globe doesn't even come on, which is pretty normal. And it's um, it's getting about 220 volts, so even unrestricted. So I'll just go to full fun, won't make any difference. And there we go, we're pulling two watts at uh, 230 odd volts. So I'd say this transformer is good. So just give me a minute, I'll refit the new transformer and uh, wire it in, and we'll try that out. New transformer's in, uh, I'll just uh, check it and uh, We'll see how it goes this time. Uh, I've put the uh, rectifier and all the valves are in now actually so it's actually ready to work. Um, I've got a multimeter set up here and it's connected to this um, the output of the rectifier. I think we're supposed to have about 250 volts out of there. So I'm going to put it on restricted power and there's our bulb and that's behaving normally. Just read the wattage. The wattage is 11, 11 watts. So everything looking good so far. The bulb's completely gone out. I don't know what that means. And we should start reading a voltage here and that bulb should start coming up and I can hear the radio. So it's only reading 67 volts. I would have thought it'd be more... Uh, it's not restricted of course. You're only feeding 116. I'll just wind it back slightly. The wattage is 8.3, so that's normal. We'll go to full power. The radio is just dying off because I've wound the voltage back. So, I'm on 200. Not as much as it should be. It's working. Mm, got a lot of watts going through there. Yeah, we might. Have, some of those uh, caps might be might be doing that. I think. We are a, a, a child uh, who is taken by hot water, hot water, and does this decides that he is going to it. He is going to avenge this terrible thing by killing. Okay. Uh, or at least. Uh, All right, but that's working now. So uh, we're up to 144. Uh, yeah, it's supposed to be 250. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, anyway, I think uh, the next step is to get all these old capacitors out here, which is probably not helping it. 
any any at all so I'll um, I'll do that now I'm going to change some caps now um, these ones I've not seen these before they're almost like they're plastic and a wax filled or something I don't know uh, anyway I'm going to change them all because I just can't be bothered mucking around with caps I did notice as this radio was running the voltage on the B plus was coming up slowly so the caps were reforming which would be these um, um, electrolytics in here all right so I'm not going to bore you with changing the caps so I'll just show you that I'm replace them. These are caps are from Carl's Capacitor um, on eBay so um, you know these are great they're black black all over they look much better in a radio than sticking a yellow one in particularly an old one but because this isn't an old radio I'm going to use these old stock ones I've got lying around I'll get rid of these and uh, keep the uh, Carl's ones for the for the um, the better radios so, uh, I'll leave a link in the description for Carl this electrolytics no good so I'm going to put a solder tab on there so I'm just going to uh, I've just taken some of the edge off that uh, pin that's sticking up and I'm going to just solder that down on there then I can attach both this one and uh, this one as well actually I just realized that's that's got three on it so I'll have to uh, get a longer one of these I think Right. I've spent the last two or three hours putting in this tab strip and some new electrolytics to replace the two uh, in, that were there originally. Uh, I've done three caps and uh, this resistor here is a is a new old stock resistor. That's the one that uh, makes up the grid bias, keeps the uh, center tap above earth. So um, yeah, it, it's... Um, looks all right it's very tight though um, so I did the best I could in that area so I'm gonna put some power on I've got my as you remember we only ever had about a hundred and what do we have I can't remember now 150 or something in on this B plus yeah it's working yeah. that volume controls are mess so it's supposed to be 250 so I got 246 that's not bad is it so that's brought that back um, there's some crackling going on I could hear uh, that might be the volume control so that's uh, that's pretty pretty close to spot on all right so I'm going to just continue with these other ones in here it's not that many more to go and uh, that should just about get it going I think give it a clean up run through a tune an IF tune uh, I'll check the valves make sure they're all working properly and uh, looks like it's going to be a good one I've replaced the rest of those capacitors and uh, just giving it a run now I sprayed the uh, two vo volume and tone control and they've come up okay so uh, we'll come home to Australia and, and when they come home what do they need people are using Facebook it's quite a lot of people using Facebook yeah so it's working really well um, I got to work on this uh, tuning it's not working um, the rippling in the dial is hitting the uh, cursor so um, that's an issue I have to try and glue it down again or something I don't know what I'll do with that we'll look at that a bit later um, I need to go through check all the voltages on the valves and uh, wherever else just make sure we're running okay I've changed a couple of resistors uh, but I'll just check the voltages on the others and uh, make sure that they're within and that uh, might prove the resistors uh, well enough for what I need uh, then I'll give it a, an alignment and polish it all up and put it back together but I might have a quick go at this dial string um, it's very tight very tight and Towards the end there, for some reason, it gets hit hard, so hard you can't move it. Um, but the, the, the issue is not in the um, condenser, and it's not in this shaft, so there's not much else in here. There's a little, little pulley in there. And that's free. That's as free as a bird, that one. 
Um, let's have a quick look at this end. Another little pulley there. Um, oh, wow, that's frozen. Completely. Oh, I cannot move that. That's uh, it's riveted on as well. Uh, I'll just let the tension off this spring. Pull the string away from this pulley. Let's get it out of the way. Oh, see if we can move it. Um, I <laughs> don't, don't think I'm moving it actually, it's tight. Oops. Okay, I think I am moving it now. Um. So I've put, a, put some rag in there and I'm keeping the dial string away. I don't want to get any uh, lubricants on the dial string. So this is it's just starting to work in now. It's just coming loose. But it's still very tight. I right, put some uh, I put some oil in there. Okay, that's pretty good actually. So I'll keep that string away. I need to uh, clean out that little the little pulley. Okay, I'll just put the spring back on. Let's see how we go. That spring hasn't got a lot of tension on it, so. It might be another thing we can look at. Yeah, it's still not turning. <laughs> that pulley, that pulley is tight. Wow. One wonders if it's ever turned at all. It's just been riveted in there. Well, I turned the cameras off, and I've been working on this pulley, trying to free it up for quite a while, and I couldn't, I couldn't get it to spin freely. Um, so I ended up drilling out the original uh, little stud or axle or whatever you want to call it. And that's, there's a hole in this plate that's uh, been pushed through and then riveted down. And uh, from the factory, they've riveted it so hard that the, um, uh, the little pulley couldn't spin on the axle anymore. It was too tight. So uh, no amount of me lubricating it was ever going to free that up. So I drilled it out and I uh, manufactured a new one or fabricated a new one out of a screw. Uh, just machined down to uh, fit through the little hole there and uh, riveted that over. So that's working quite well. So it's actually working now. So that's never worked from the factory. That's never spun. That's where I riveted it over there. So it's come out flush. So now, uh, yeah, the tune's really nice. So nice and nice and easy. Good morning. Uh, I'm going to do some voltage checks on this um, Westinghouse radio. Uh, just and that kind of will help me test the uh, resistors without going through them all. They're a bit hard to test in circuit. Um, so. I've done tested the high voltage ones. I think they were pretty good, so I changed a couple. They were out of tolerance. So I'm just going to turn the radio on, which I put it on there, and just checking the voltage there. It's um, showing on my watt meter is 243 volts. Let's see what happens once it starts running. Okay, I've got the voltage settled on 236 to 37 volts, so that's pretty good. Yeah, I've got my voltmeter on DC volts, um, and here's the, uh, we've got 170 on that plate, number 5, 170 on that plate, the screen on both of those should be 75, so we'll see how we go with those two, the plate is number 5, and the screen is number 6, so that'll be number 5 because it's coming off that IF can. We got 282, 88. It's a bit high. Uh, screen. 82. That's supposed to be 75. So that plate was supposed to be 170. It's 108 and 90. That's supposed to be 75. And what have we got? About 82. So it's not that much high. So this one. Where are we? So that should be the plate. That's the same, of course. And the next one around will be the screen, and that'll be the same as well, because they're both of the same supply. Okay, so the next one is the 
uh, the preamp and the, de and the detector. So that's uh, one, two. I better see what I'm supposed to be doing, aren't I? So that one is number seven, is the plate. And it should be 105 volts. Let's have a look at that. Uh, the plate number seven, there it is there. And we got uh, 60, 60. And it's supposed to be 105, so that's low. Uh, it's got a new capacitor on it there. Uh, that resistor there. So that's the positive, so that's going to be a high voltage. 195, 195, see if that's right. Okay, so there it is there. Uh, it should be 170. So that's low as well. Sorry, that's high. It's supposed to be 170 and we've got 195. So the other side of this resistor should be the full 250 odd. Yeah, there you go. So it's got it there, so it's dropping a fair bit off there. So the fact that that's high and these others are high, but this one's low would uh, indicate that resistor, but I checked that yesterday. So it's red, red, yellow, so that's two, two and four zeros, 220k. Here it is there. Yeah, so that's right, there's 170 along there, comes along here, goes through here, should drop it to 105, so... Okay, I'll have to see what that resistor is. I'm pretty sure I checked it yesterday. Uh, while I'm here, I'll just check that grid voltage, which is pin 1. Should be about minus 8. And just on minus 7, so that's okay. Alright, so oh, well, I'll have a look at this resistor. I've, I've desoldered that and I'll just check its resistance. And it's supposed to be 220k. That's 231, so that's... Uh, 10% higher, that's uh, well within. All right, I'll put that back. That's not the issue then. I've resoldered that uh, resistor back in. So uh, now, uh, not quite sure what else. Maybe check the valve. Uh, maybe that's playing up. I'll to see if I've got another one. All right, I've got a new old stock um, 6AV6. So I'll put that in. We'll see what happens. Okay, so uh, I've changed that valve. Uh, what do we need? Here. See if it made a difference. 97. How about that? Huh. Well, I'm calling that good enough. All right. Let's just go back and see if that's made a difference to the other valves, uh, which were a bit high. No, not really. 82. Yeah, it's supposed to be 75, I think. Uh, this should be 100 and... Uh, 70 odd, so it's still a bit high, but I don't think that's uh, an issue. And of course, we fix this puppy, so yeah, 98, that's good. Back, uh, that's pretty, pretty right, actually. So, just for a bit of fun, I thought we might test some of the uh, valves, seeing that one was dragging down the voltage. So, I'll just I'm going to check them all. I don't, don't, don't know that uh, these valve testers are all. Uh, terribly accurate all the time, but they might give us an indication. Uh, so that's a 6x4. Uh, now the voltage is a D, so they're all going to be D, so I don't have to worry about that. So two tests on the 6x4. There's D, uh, triangle, socket 3, we know. Uh, 6 and 1, sensitivity 30. And uh, dis disregard the shorting for number 4. So I've got the sensitivity on 30. I'll put that on one for fun. Uh, it's on diamond, so we're ready to go. I've got the valve on, T now. So let's just check for shorts first. That's uh, I always check for shorts, and when number four should be that's okay. So that's okay there. Yep, there's a short on nine. Wonder what it's shorting to. All right. Uh, well, then that that valve's no good. So that was the original valve in it. I took it out because I didn't trust it. I didn't think it was right because I was having trouble with those transformers. So uh, I got rid of that. I didn't even put it in. So I'll try to chuck that out. Uh, there's another one there. 
So that's, that's another 6x4. Let's give that a shot. It's warming up. That's a, it's a second hand one. It's not a new one. So check for shorts. Short on 4, that's okay. Short on 9. Hmm. That's interesting. Let's try and see where it's at. 30. Well, it's no good, is it? That was the other one, six. I'll just check. Yeah, one and six on the selector, so six is okay. Number one. Nope, so that valve's a dud as well. Hmm. Okay. Six X4s are hard to get. Well, I haven't got many of them, by the way. There's another one. Try that one. Okay, I've got it on short. Let's give that a shot. Four should be okay. Nine. That must be a standard thing. Unless they all fail in the same place. Okay, we'll give it a go. Oh, that one's had it. Look at it. Nothing. What have I done wrong? Three. Oh. How are they all failing the same way? Gosh, well, that's going through my supply. I'll test them. This is the one I've had in it uh, for the last few days, which I had marked as being a good one. So let's uh, give that a go. Okay, let's do a short test. No, that one, that one doesn't short on nine. Okay, so I'll put it back to one. Go to test. That one's good. Look at that. I'll just go with a six, which is the other diode. 30. No, that's a good one. All right, we'll keep that one. So I said I had tested that prior and said it was good. So I've put the output valve in there. That's a um, 6AQ5. Uh, I'm just uh, check again. I've got uh, D square. Uh, socket 3 of course, won't fit anywhere else, uh, select on 1, sensitivity on 30, and ignore number 4 for a short. So put it on. Okay, let's do a short test on this. Forward we can ignore. That looks good. All right. um, select this to be on 1. Go to reg. And... That's not looking flash, is it? Just check the numbers again. 6AQ5, square, socket 3, selector 1, sensitivity 30. Dead. Okay, that's a dud. Okay, 6AQ5. Okay, I got a new old stock one there. Uh, uh, just check the shorts on this one. Number 4 is okay. So that's okay. Selector on one, I think, and 30. Let's see how we go. So that's a brand new one. Yeah, so that's okay. All right. Okay, the next one is a 6BA6. Uh, D, triangle, 3, 1, and 30. Disregard 4. So triangle. Okay, let's test this for short. So one, I think it said four, was okay for a short. What should we on there? There we go. That's a good one. And test on number one. Go to twist test. Oh, that's a good one. Beautiful. That's a nice one. All right. Put that one back. And our last one, which is the mixer, is a 6BE6. So I'll just pre-warm that. Out of those settings, I'll be correct for that. 6BE6, D, triangle 3, 1, 30, and 4. Okay, that's warmed up. I'll just check this. For shorts, they said four was okay. There you go. That's great. Let's put it on one. Let's put it on test. Sensitivity 30. That's a good one as well. Great. Okay, good. So we, out of five valves, we've got two. Just interested to see what the voltages are now that I've changed the valves. So I'll just put some power on. 
Alright, the mains going in is about uh, two, 2.35 So we should have 150 odd here uh, 250 We should have about 170 odd there, we've got 176 uh, The plate for this valve was 100, well it's 176 so That's what it'll be, yeah and the screen was supposed to be 75, got 77. Uh, what else we got here? This was supposed to be 105. What do we got? 90, 89. So it's still a bit low that one, but uh, I'm happy with that. And the grid for this one over here is which, this one. Should be that one there. And that was supposed to be minus eight. So. There you go, so changing the valves um, did change the voltages, I didn't expect that sort of thing so much, so that's good, everything looks pretty good now, so very happy with that. Just going to check the alignment, um, I'm pretty confident it's it's good because the uh, everything's working very well. So I'm just going to adjust my signal generator to get the maximum uh, voltage on this um, multimeter here, and all I've done is connected the multimeter across the speaker. So. I've got to have the volume up pretty loud. I don't think I need to muck around too much. So I'm just doing a quick check. If it's all right, I'm going to leave it. Um, so I'm going to turn the volume up and I'll probably mute the sound in the video so you won't have to listen to it. Um, and then I'm going to just twirl this around till I get the maximum reading there and I'll see if we've got our uh, 455 kilohertz, which is what this is set to. Okay, what we end up with? 455.81, that's close enough. So I, I'm not going to do anything. The, um, the tracking on the dial is perfect. It, uh, it's spot on the station, so I don't think I need to uh, go any further with this one. So uh, I'll just go and uh, prepare the case and I think we can uh, put it to bed. Yeah, another problem I've found is the, this, is the uh, cursor off the tuning dial and this one's missing its little hook where the string goes and this one has a big crack in it it's only just hanging on by the smallest amount so I'm going to try and solder it and see if I can fix it I've bent up a bit of brass which I'll try and sweat under there to make another hook so we'll see how we go now I'm just going to attempt to put a little just some solder in the in the in the gap there so that it can solder between this piece here and the and the little tang. I don't think I can do much else. Just like that. So that looks pretty good. It's just filled up the little channel in there. I've still got room to put the string and it's now quite strong. So that's one done. So I'll just put a bit of solder here. I've just put a bit of flux on the uh, little bit of brass there. So we should be able to just if I can keep my hand steady, I should be able to sweat this together. It's come up pretty, pretty good, I think. Yeah, it's nice and strong. The thing is, it's upside down. Okay, I've put it on upside down. I'll just undo it and uh, put it the right way around. Okay. Okay. So that's that's uh, that's going to be good. A little uh, the string will fit in there, and I'll just a little bit of adhesive or nail polish or hot glue or something in there, and that'll get that back to working properly. Well, there it is. It's all back in its case. It's uh, a bit of 1960s kitsch. It comes up pretty pretty nice, I reckon. 
uh, nothing particularly uh, done to the case or anything. I've just cleaned it up a bit and uh, yeah, it looks good. And it's working really well. Um, it sounds good in its uh, case there. Yeah, it's unusual design, uh, although typical of the 60s, so uh, it looks good. If you had a 60s retro kitchen or something, that'd look terrific there. Uh, so, uh, pretty straightforward repair. So there's the casualty list. Uh, the unfortunate thing, of course, was the transformer. Uh, luckily I had another one, but that's the third radio in probably half a dozen that's needed a transformer, and I've never changed one prior to that, so uh, a bit of a run there. Some resistors, um, some capacitors, three valves had to go, and uh, yeah, it's, it's working good. So thanks for watching. I had a bit of fun with this one. Um, but nice and clean, easy to do, and I uh, didn't need a lot of work, and I've kept it original. So it's even got the missing uh, Westinghouse, there's the gold's worn off here. Oh, one thing I wanted to say, uh, the um, this Perspex on this was quite scratched up, and I actually bought some uh, some polish to uh, to polish it, and it did absolutely nothing. So I ended up using a headlight, headlight restorer kit that I had in the garage for ages. So, uh, that has about three or four little pads in it that you can uh, braid it, um, uh, like sandpaper I suppose, they're very fine though, and just uh, bring it back gradually to uh, to nice and shiny. So it come out alright, it's, it's um, nice and clear, so it looks good. Okay, well uh, thanks very much for watching, and I uh, hope you enjoyed uh, watching this and getting a bit of info out of it. I, I certainly learned something, I learned something on every radio I do. Alright, we'll see you uh, next time hopefully, and uh, if you've got any comments please uh, feel free to put them in there, good or bad. If I've done something silly, let me know. If I've done something good or you've learned something, let me know that too. If you enjoyed it, let me know that. So uh, until next time, thanks very much.